and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your I welcome you to the grotto. I welcome all those who are joining the diocesan pilgrimage from Westminster, particularly the Welsh National Pilgrimage with Archbishop Mark O'Toole and the Brentwood Pilgrimage with your Bishop Alan Williams. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We call to mind our sins and seek the pardon and mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Immaculate Mother of God may, with the help of her intercession, Rise up from our iniquities, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. sent his son, born of a woman, born subject to the law, to redeem the subjects of the law, and to enable us to be adopted as sons. The proof that you are sons is that God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit that cries, Abba, Father, and it is this that makes you a son. You are not a slave anymore. And if God has made you a son, he has made you heir. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Oh. 
promises made to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Amen. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said, Woman, why turn to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. There were six stone jars standing there, meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Draw, out some, draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water, and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said, People generally serve the best wine first, and keep the cheaper salt till the guests have had plenty to drink. But you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. morning, each one of us has followed the path down to this grotto. We've done this responding to the request presented by our Blessed Lady that we come here to this sacred place in procession. Here we stand with Bernadette before Mary imploring her help for our world, so torn by strife and hostilities and anxieties. We implore her help for ourselves, for our loved ones, both living and dead. Now, in this place, we become a little more deeply part of the unfolding of our faith. Here we understand from Bernadette what it means to put our trust in Jesus, to place our life in his hands. Here we learn to lay aside our anxieties. Every time they return for come back, they surely do. Here we learn to respond to each other with care and gentleness and not to be overcome by timidity and suspicion that can so easily surround us. Cynicism can creep into our hearts. Fear can hold us back. Anxiety can shut us in, depriving us of the sunlight of each other's care. 
leaving us isolated and downcast. Now St Paul has a way of speaking about this story of faith that we are to enter more deeply. He tells us how it works in our lives. And he puts it very simply. You are not a slave anymore. Rather, he says, we are adopted as sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. We are rescued from every imprisonment. Think of what this means. No longer slaves, but daughters and sons. So we go from being a slave burdened and bound by duty to a person who freely offers loving service. We go from being a slave who has no voice at all or who has lost their voice and confidence to one who can raise a joyful voice of praise and thanksgiving in every time and every place. We go from having no status, no confidence, to knowing that we are treasured sons and daughters of God. Now I read recently of three or four of the England football players who confidently declared their faith in Christ. And they explained that faith gives them an identity and a security that does not depend on their success as footballers. They know who they are and what is important beyond the glitter of their sporting careers. So for us too, our sense of our own worth does not depend on a successful career. It's not dependent on our achievements and capabilities, for which of course we thank God. Our worth is not taken away by illness and infirmity. Rather, as St. Paul says, the proof of our dignity and worth is that God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit that cries out, Abba, Father, so this is the wondrous truth of faith that we can learn again here. We are worthy in the sight of God who pours into our inner selves every good gift. When we're freed from every rancor, envy, jealousy, suspicion, we simply have to receive, to be thankful, and to respond in joyful praise. This is the same Spirit who gives life to the Church. And here in the grotto, we can breathe in more deeply that life of the Church. Here we salute Mary, the first member of the Church, commissioned from the cross. Here we learn again about the Church as the rock, withstanding all weakness and attack from within and from without. Here we come to the church as a source of the flowing water of the sacraments, cleansing and restoring us day by day with the wonder of Christ's life. On your pilgrimage here in Lourdes, remember to come and touch this rock and restore your faith in the church, our rock. Come, wash yourself in the water, listen to the tumbling of the spring, and know that you are renewed by the sacraments. So one last point. It's often said that here in the grotto, the distance between heaven and earth is shortened. Here we can glimpse a listen more keenly the peace and the beauty of heaven. And this is important because St. Paul tells us 
in being made a son and daughter, we are also made the inheritors of heavenly glory. So here, sensing the touch of heaven, we are closer to home. This is the journey on which we have embarked, the very purpose of our life, that in procession, in pilgrimage, we make our way to our Heavenly Father, to the one who provides wine for the feast from the simple water of our efforts, and who will give an ending joy to all who trust him. Late in life, Bernadette said these words, listen to them now and let them linger in your heart. She said this, I will do everything for heaven because heaven is my homeland. I will find my mother there in all the splendor of her glory. There I will enjoy the happiness of Jesus in perfect security. So let it be. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the Father's great love for us and confident that here he will hear and answer us, we turn to him in prayer. We pray for Pope Francis. For all clergy and religious. We give thanks for their selfless service to the church and ask that our Blessed Lady strengthen and protect them as they work to support the communities they serve. Lord, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all members across our pilgrimage families <coughs> and wider communities. We ask that we may find the confidence and courage to follow the example of St. Bernadette in our everyday lives and say yes to God's plan for us. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are unwell, in hospital or facing difficulties and hardships at this time. May the Lord be their strength in times of need. We pray too for all those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of silent prayer, let us bring our private intentions to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask Our Lady to join her prayers with ours as we say.
pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord bless us. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered and no request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the Blessed Ever Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim Worship together with exaltation. May our voices be prayed. Join with theirs in humble adoration as we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may manage to be coerced in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him and with him and in him. Lord, 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 Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
sacrament. We beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Master, and the Thanks be to God.